Hello friends and viewers, thanks for being here and you are watching Highway Ride with Palani Pundarangam. In this video, we will learn some basics of structural engineering like the difference between the normal mix and design mix, double reinforcement and single reinforcement, one way slab and two way slab, what is the clear cover required for the concrete works, what is the time period required for the removal of the farm work, what is the TMT, what is the yield line theory of the slab, what is the working stress method and limit state method and ultimate state method. Like this, these are some of the basics we will learn in this video. Well, let's move on to topic friends. The design mix means to determine the proportions of the concrete like cement, aggregates and water. Usually in aggregates, we will use the fine aggregate and coarse aggregate. In coarse aggregate, we will use the 20 mm aggregates. But in this design mix, the aggregate we will use for the 12 mm as well as the 20 mm for the different ratios. So, to attain the required strength, by designing the concrete mix, such concrete is called as a design mix concrete. This design mix concrete is we cannot use for any reason of the work. For example, the design mix can be determined for the different ratios. First ratios we will use cement. Second is fine aggregate. The third one is coarse aggregate. It is like a usual concrete that is a nominal concrete mix. But design mix we will use a coarse aggregate 12 mm as well as 20 mm, sometimes we will use the 6 mm also. This kind of the ratio we will design, this is called as a design mix concrete. Now we will discuss the nominal mix. Nominal mix means adopting the nominal mix ratio for the concrete works is called as a nominal mix concrete. This nominal mix concrete can be used only for up to M20 concrete or lower grade of the M20 concrete ratio only. The M denotes the mixing ratio. The 20 denotes the compressive strength of the concrete. For the size of the cube is 150 mm. After the 28 days of the curing, you will get the strength Newton per mm square as a 20. For example of the nominal mix as per IS 456-2000, it is given in the page number 16 on table 2. They are saying M8. I said the M is the mixing ratio. The 8 is the compressive strength of the concrete. The M8 means the nominal mix 1, 4, 8. The 1 denotes the cement. 4 denotes the sand. 8 denotes the coarse aggregate that is a 20 mm only. Likewise, M10 denotes 1, 3, 6 ratio. M15 denotes 1, 2, 4 ratio. M20 denotes 1 is to 1 and a half is to 3. M25 denotes 1, 1, 2. So this is the example of your nominal mix ratio given in IS456 page number 16 and table 2. So this is the basic difference between the design mix and nominal mix. Once again I am repeating design mix means we are determining the proportions of cement, aggregate, and water. Nominal mix means we are going to adopt the nominal mix ratio which is already designed concrete mix ratio. The next one is cube test as per Indian standards. Any of the concrete works the cube test is required because based on the cube test only we can assure what is the quality or what is the strength of the concrete attained. For this purpose, we need to cast the cubes for the different quantity of the concrete works. For example, concrete quantity in terms of cubic meter or m cube, the number of set required for the cubes. Set means three numbers of cube. The cube size is 150 mm by 150 mm. If you are pouring 1 m cube to 5 m cube of concrete means you need to cast one set of cube. One set means that is a three numbers. Size is 150 mm by 150 mm. Same like that. If you are pouring 6 m cube to 15 m cube, you need to cast two set of cubes. Then 16 m cube to 30 m cube means three set of cubes. 31 m cube to 50 m cube of concrete works, you need to cast four set of the cubes. The last one, if you are pouring 51 m cube and above, you have to take five set of cubes. So this is the, as per the Indian standards, you have to take the cubes 
for the different quantity of the concrete works. Well, let's discuss about the clear cover for concrete works. Already we have discussed the clear cover for concrete works in video E, that is the barbering schedule. You can also refer in that video. Now we will discuss the clear cover for the concrete works. For beam 25 mm, slab 20 mm, for column works 40 mm, for foundation works 50 mm. These are the standard clear cover. Also you can refer your structural drawings before proceeding your works. So these are the numbers for the clear cover for your concrete. You can use this clear cover and avoid the corrosion and increase the lifetime of your concrete structures element. Usually we will call the TMT bar but we don't know what is meant by TMT abbreviations. So many of the time we used to call the TMT bar, TMT bar like this. But what is the meaning of the TMT or what is the abbreviation of the TMT means the TMT denotes thermo-mechanically treated bar that is T denotes thermo, M denotes mechanically again the T denotes treated bar that bars are called as a twisted bars the bars are like this twisted these bars are called as a TMT bar this TMT bar is available 12 mm and above bars. The other bar is plain bar. The plain bar is there is no twisted shape. Only is a plain shape. The plain bar is available 8 mm and 10 mm. There is no TMT bar for 8 mm and 10 mm. So this is the abbreviation for your TMT bar. The next one is very very important for farm work removal time period for the different types of concrete works. It is important you can also refer IS 456-2000. It is available in page number 25 for the different works for the form of removal time. The first column is different types of form work. The second column is the different time required for the different types of form works. The first work is vertical form work. Vertical form work means column, wall and beam sides. We can say vertical form works. These form works you can remove them after the 16 to 24 hours of your concrete works. The next one, slabs of it. You can remove the slabs of it after 3 days of your concrete works. The next one, beams of it. The beams of it you can remove after 7 days of concrete. The next one, removal of props to slab. The slab is up to 4.5 meter span means you can remove the after the 7 days. If the slab is more than 4.5 meters span means you can remove the after 14 days that is a 2 weeks. The last one, removal of props to your beam. If it is a beam span is 6 meter, you can remove the after 14 days. If the beam span is more than 6 meter, you can remove that beam is after the 21 days. So this is the form of removal time for the different form of works. You have to wait up to these times to remove your form works. Then only the structural element should be proper. Now we will discuss the difference between the one way slab and two way slab. The one way slab means LY by LX. Greater than two means it is a one way slab. The LY denotes longer span. LX denotes shorter span. If it is a ratio LY by LX more than 2, it is called as a one-way slab. In one-way slab, we will provide the main reinforcement in shorter direction with crank length. In longer direction, we will provide the distribution rod. This is called as a one-way slab. In one-way slab, we will consider only one direction main reinforcement that is shorter direction. In two-way slab, the ratio between the LY by LX is less than 2 means it is a 2 way slab. The LY is a longer span, LX is a shorter span. Both the direction, that is a longer direction as well as shorter direction, we will provide the main reinforcement with the crank reinforcements. So this is the difference between the 1 way slab and 2 way slab. The next one, stirrups and lateral ties. Stirrups means the rings which is using in a beam is called as a stirrups. The lateral ties means the rings which is using in a column is called as a 
lateral ties both stirrups and lateral ties are same but the structural elements are different so the stirrups and lateral ties are using for shear reinforcement in a structural elements the next two are the same singly reinforced beam and doubly reinforced beam difference the singly reinforced beam means the tension reinforcement will be provided only bottom of the beam the top reinforcement for hanger purpose that is a hanging bar it is called as a singly reinforced beam the doubly reinforced beam means the tension reinforcement will be provided bottom of the beam as well as top of the beam will be provided tension reinforcement it is called as a doubly reinforced beam the capital d denotes breadth of the beam the capital d denotes depth of the beam so this is the difference between the singly reinforced beam and doubly reinforced beam the next one is two legged stirrup and four legged stirrups most of them having a confuse in what is meant by two legged stirrup what is the four legged stirrups most of the time we will confuse while referring our structural drawings two legged stirrups means only one ring which is having two legs the two legs means it is a hook the hook will be provided 10 times of d while taking the bbs quantity calculate this hook length is 10 times of small d the small t means it is a diameter of the reinforcement there are two hook that is a two leg multiply two numbers you will get the two times of hook quantity of reinforcement so this is called as a two legged stirrups four legged stirrups mean in a single beam or column we will use two reinforcement that is a two stirrups or two lateral ties we will use one stirrups have two leg another one stirrups have two legs so total four legs it is called as a four legged stirrups this hook also you can calculate for the bbs purpose 10 times of d the small t denotes diameter of the reinforcement so this is a different between two legged stirrups and four legged stirrups the next one is that design methods of structural elements the first structural design method is working stress method that is called as a wsm in this wsm method the structures are stable but after the lifetime of your structure it cannot be reused so this is the disadvantage of your working stress method the next design method is ultimate load method you can also call as a ulm in this ultimate load method the structure will be brittle suddenly so this is a disadvantage of in this ulm method the last method it is a well known method for us it is a limit state method that is a lsm in this limit state method is the structure is stable and also we can reuse the structure after the some repairing works or maintenance works of your structural elements so commonly structural element design method is limit state method is we are using some of the structure we are designing by working stress method so this is the technical difference between the working stress method ultimate load method and limit state method the next one is the difference between the under reinforcement and over reinforcement for under reinforcement technically we can differentiate for under reinforcement means mu is less than the mu limit or over reinforcement is mu is greater than the mu limit the mu means it is a moment so now for under reinforcement so mu is less than the mu limit in this under reinforcement beam the deflection will be appearing on your bottom because of the deflection the cracks will be appearing are visible in the bottom of the beam based on the visibility of the cracks you can go for the possible repair and maintenance works of your structural elements so that it is under reinforcement for over reinforcement this is a example of your beam the capital d denote depth of the beam the deflection occurring on the top due to the deflection of the beam the beam will get the cracks on top of the beam the cracks will not be visible because the cracks will be appearing on the top of the beam 
so that the repairing and maintenance work is not possible at a proper time. So it is a disadvantage for your over reinforcement. So that we are designing all the structural element in a under reinforcement manner. So the next one is very very important, guys. So for any structural design, use small diameter of the reinforcement in the closer spacing like this. Small diameter you can use with closer spacing. Also avoid the using of larger diameter of the reinforcement like this and avoid the larger spacing in this manner. If you are avoiding the larger spacing as well as the larger diameter of the reinforcement also you can use for a smaller diameter of the reinforcement in a closer spacing the both will be avoid and you can reduce the width of the cracks in your structural elements so this is very very important please keep it in your mind while designing your elements this concept is very very important for your water retaining structures like water tank under because if it is a small cracks also will lead to leakage in your structural elements so please keep it in your mind and design like this the last basics of the structural element in this video yield line theory of slab in this yield line theory of slab will be designed the concept which is analysis by elastic theory and redistributed by elasticity so in this manner we are designing yield line theory of slab this is the original length of your slab after deformation this is the length of your slab after regain of your slab this is the length of the slab the difference between the deformed and regain the remaining portion of your length of the slab is called as a yield this is called as a yield portion of your slab so this is a concept we are using for yield line theory of your slab Thank you so much friends for watching this video. If you like this video kindly like and comment on comment section what or topic you request for the next videos. If you are not subscribed kindly subscribe and press the bell button. You will receive my upcoming videos notification. Thank you so much for watching this video once again.